Good morning. Are you clapping for me or for the dance? I, I actually, it was the first time that I really felt rejected in the house of the Lord when I came on Friday for an audition and they chased me out. <laughs> no, I'm joking, they didn't. But we can give them a great round of applause again. They did well. Thank you to the dance team. And uh, if you're here and you want to become part of the dance team, put your name up and uh, they will make contact with you so that you can become part of that ministry. Um, that is now, if your wife told you that you can dance, you know, please um, do something else. But if, you know, <laughs> but if you know you have that rhythm, we don't struggle with these type of people sitting here. We know it's, it, it just comes naturally. You know, you could see the difference. So please, if you want to be part of it, make your way there and uh, come dance with them. Uh, but we are starting and kicking off today officially with our campaign. Uh, love revolution, six weeks, 40 days of love revolution that we want to equip you with, that we want to build into your life. We want to really raise an expectation within you so that you can get to a place where you can say, I will love my city back to life. That's what we want to do throughout this campaign. And we're going to focus on certain concepts about love in the Bible. And we start off with God is love, uh, love God, love one another, love your neighbor, love your enemy. And ultimately in week six, we're going to focus on make this love visible. Now for, the, for you to get the most out of this, you need to become part and parcel of a host group. And uh, this coming Wednesday... In the LAPA, where, fusion, where, where we normally have fusion on a, on a Thursday evening, in the LAPA Wednesday evening, all of you, if you want to become part of a host group, make sure that you get to the LAPA 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening, and we will make sure that you become part of an amazing group and that you journey together for six weeks. I want you to commit for six weeks and see how your life will change and realize that, sorry, excuse me, that you will not just remain committed for that six weeks, but it will become a lifestyle in your life. So make sure that you do that. And then throughout this course, we will have uh, 42 daily devotions that we will post on our website every morning. And from tomorrow morning, we will start posting it. You can go and download it, listen to it, or you can read the scripture for the day and journey together. But if you become part of a group, your group leader or facilitator, they will then send these messages to you via voice note and also just the image through WhatsApp and the WhatsApp group. So make sure that you do that. And then if you want to uh, follow us in terms of the preaching notes, the sermon notes, it will be on version. You go to events in Doxadeo Raslo. It will show their live. You just open it up. You uh, fill, or, or then you journey with us through the sermon, and then you make your own notes, and then you can save those notes. Make sure that you click save, and uh, just if th this is not just for the campaign. It will be every Sunday. You can go onto it and make the notes that the sermon will be available. Are you guys ready for this campaign? Come on, we're gonna be. It's gonna be an amazing time, and we're gonna journey together. Uh, when I thought of today's sermon regarding just. God is love, and uh, I was thinking about my one friend, he's also a minister, um, he's actually a reverend, uh, Ambu, and uh, Ambu is a reverend, a Zulu boyki uh, from Durban, and uh, I remember Ambu, he came, uh, he was in Port Elizabeth for quite a while, and, uh, he, and as I started to get to know him, he actually told me a lot of stories about him. How he, how he was brought up and how he grew up, all those things. And, and he was adopted from baby by a British family. And so these two white people from Britain, <laughs> stay in South Africa, they adopted him as their child, as their son. And he was their only son. And Ambu told me this one story. He said to me, uh, we were speaking, and I tell him, what was the funniest stories that you can tell me about your adoption? You know, growing up with this white family, tell me. Because, uh, you know, I, I always felt like it when I look at my wife and I feel adopted by her. Um, <laughs> because I, I get so much love from her. Why are you guys laughing? <laughs> I, I, you see these people. But anyway, 
And so Ombu tells me this story. He says, so this one day they went shopping, he and his mom. And he says, so they in this one of the clothing shops in, and she's busy shopping. And the next minute he disappears. And so he's gone, you know, and he's walking around there and, and he's looking for his mom. And he realized his mom said to him, if you get lost, please go to the information kiosk and just ask him to make an announcement, then I will get you there. That was, you know, the, the whole, you know, uh, uh, escape plan. And so he went to the information kiosk and he got there and the security guy was standing there and he said to me, excuse me, sir. And this security guy starts speaking closer with him. And he says, I don't understand. He says, hi, where now? Man. He says, I don't understand. He says, because he doesn't understand any, you know, African language. He's like, please speak English. And the security guy's like, hey, where now? You know, and he's a closer guy. I mean, you know, so he's like, and uh, he says, okay, let me do the announcement. And he grabs Ambu by the hand and he announced, he says, uh, you know, he does the announcement. And the next minute, Ambu says he saw his mom coming down the aisle and he's like, hey, sir, 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 it's my mom. He's like, I went up, man, it's not your mom. He's like, no, it's my mom, it's my mom. He's like, no, it's not your mom. And so Ambu starts crying and he gets so emotional. He says, no, it's my mom. And suddenly he says to me, it feels like the whole world is just falling down. His whole life is falling apart because he's not going to see his mom. This guy's going to keep him away from his mom. And he starts screaming, mom, mom. And his mom comes and, this, and the security guy looks at Ambu. He looks at his mom. He's like, I went up. Ish. <laughs> And his mom, you know, picked him up and she gave him a hug. And uh, she hugs him and he was crying and his, his tears stopped. And Ambu said, it was the best feeling in his whole life. Realizing that he at that moment thought his mom is gone. When she picked him up and gave him a hug and realized this is unconditional love. He says, up until today, I think he was at that stage 24 when he told me the story, 24, 25. He says, up until today, there's no other greater love than the love that I've experienced through my mom. And he says, this was so significant that moment where he felt this distance, where he felt no one cares about him, when his, his environment felt like he's lost. Still, the moment his mom picked him up, his environment didn't change. The circumstances didn't change. What matters most was the fact that he knew that in his, whose hands he is in right now is the one who holds his future in their hands. And what that was his mom. And how much more, if I can think about this theme of love revolution, understanding that God loves you and I more than this entire world, everything, Christ would still would have died for you if you would have been the only person on this earth. That's how God feels about us. He's the one who holds our future in his hands. He's the one who makes sure that even though your circumstances doesn't change, his love does not change. That's the God that we serve. But he's a God that, that we want to build into your life, that understanding that love it's so important that to love somebody, Aristotle said the following, he says, to love someone is to identify with them. You cannot love if you don't identify with the person. You cannot love if you're not willing to put yourself in those shoes. You cannot love if you're not willing to sacrifice. So love we know not only has a definition, but has an identity, has a personality. In fact, this is what the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God. I'm not talking about born in your natural capacity. I'm talking about the moment, the time when you got to a place where you were reborn, when, they were, when rebirth took place in your spirit, when you gave your heart to God. He says, up until here and no longer, I am a born again Christian and my Savior is Jesus Christ. I'm talking about that. And so the Bible says, that is born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is. <clears throat> Only those who know God, the true God, can love. 
Because this God, only this God, is love. Listen to chapter, uh, oh, verse 9. In this, the love of God was made manifesting amongst us that God sent his only son into the world. Another translation says, in, in this, it has been revealed unto us that God sent his son. You and I received the revelation of the love of God through whom? Through his son, Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you today that our departure point, our whole life is not built on faith. When it comes to Christianity, our whole life is built on the love of God. Because the foundation is not faith. The foundation is love. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. It says, and because God had faith, because we need to believe. It starts by loving and understanding the love of God. And out of that, you are, the, the, the Son of God has been revealed unto us. And because of that, I can love. My only thing that I'm doing is to respond through the love of God. That's the reason why I'm a Christian today. That's the reason why I love God. That's the reason why I'm a born-again Christian. Not because of some odd fear, fearful thing. You know, in the past, remember, uh, the preachers normally preach. And they said to you, hey, you, you need to turn or you're going to bry. Turn or burn. That was the whole idea. If you don't turn to God, you're going to bry or you're going to burn in hell. And I remember I gave my heart to God. Because I was afraid to, you know, get fried or burn. You can see by the skin color, I was kept in the oven a little bit. It's only the white people laughing, but it's okay. I'm joking, I'm joking. But because of fear, I gave my heart to God. I remember how pastors used to preach from the pulpit and saying, hey, if you don't give your heart to God tonight and you walk out of this auditorium, if the bus hits you, hey, if the bus hits you, I was praying, God, I pray it's a luxury bus, not a Patco bus. <laughs> Isn't it? At least if I go, please God, let me be hit by a luxury bus, a Marco Polo or something like that. Nice bus. You know, a Greyhound bus. <laughs> but we've been brought up like this. That if you exit this auditorium, the bus, are, the bus going to hit you. Are you going up or are you going down? And there was this fear inside of me saying, Oh Lord, I just need to give my heart to God because I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to go to hell like this. And the bus actually transports you to hell as well. No, I don't want to go like it. And out of fear, I gave my heart to God. Because somebody is driving around every Sunday evening having a list, and my name is on that list saying, if you see Lou Allen, hit him. <laughs> Thank God it never came. <laughs> Phew. But I've noticed the scriptures say it is not by fear, but by love. It says, in this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us. <laughs> that he loved us first. We only responded to him loving us, we have responded to that. And now I can journey in this love that he unveiled through his son to me and say, hey, this is why I want you to love me because I first loved you. I gave everything. And in response to that, the only thing that I want you to do is to accept my love and live your life according to this. John Piper said this, he says, God's, God's love paid the highest price the life of the son for undeserving enemy to give the greatest happiness. To give us the greatest happiness. You know how significant God works? Is God's love works like this. That I'm willing to die for my children. 
I'm willing to die for my, for my wife. I'm willing to put my life aside for people who does great things. I'm willing to do that. But what for the people who doesn't know God, for the people who are lost? You know, you, you might think twice if you want to do that. But God is saying, while we were still sinners, while we were still lost, Christ died for you. That's love. Not because you are the church. Not because you are born again. Not because you started to believe in him. Before all those things, Christ died for you and I. That's love. That's undeserving love. That's when I get to a place and realize he shows me his love. It's a different way of love. It is in this love that I can accept him as my Lord and Savior. Because it's nothing to do what I have done. It's everything to do what he has done for me and on my behalf. So when it gets to love, love does not define God. God defines love. Love is not, uh, God is not defined by love. The definition of love is because of God. Because God is outside of space, time, and matter. And because he's outside of this world, he created everything in this world, including you and I. And also the definition of love, he placed it down and says, this is what it is. And I will not distant love from me. I will be love for my people. And he says, I am love. 1 John 4 verse 16. And so we know. And we rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. So who is God? God is love. I'm not saying God has love. I'm saying God is love. And love is the essence of who God is. Love is not just a characteristic of God. Love is not just an attribute of God. Love is the nature, the very nature of God. That is what love is all about. And if I understand this, then I realize that God doesn't work like this. He doesn't fall in and out of love with us. He's a constant God. And because he's a constant God, his love is constant for you and I. No matter what you go through today, you can sit here and say, hello, Alan, but you know what? How can God God love me because I've been divorced. I've been rejected. I've rejected so many people. I did so many people in with business. You know, I did a lot of bad things in my past. How can God love me? Because he's a constant and the love, the very nature of God is inside of you and I. That's who God is. He's a constant God. In fact, this God that loves us so much, didn't give us something to illustrate or to demonstrate his love to us. He didn't come to express his love by a certain object. He gave us himself in the form of his son, Jesus Christ. That's the reason why in Christianity, we didn't give people something. We give ourselves. Paul writes and he says, you and I, and I'm paraphrasing, you and I are the living Bible on this earth. We give ourselves to people. People look at us and they say, hey, I want something that you have. You can have all, everything in this whole world, but if you don't have the love of God in your life, you will always look and search for the void because the only thing that will fill it is the love of God. Amen. So it's not something. It's someone. Jesus did not come to make God's love possible. He came to make lo God's love possible visible. Come on, people. <laughs> so the fact that he came to make it visible, you and I have the responsibility as Christians, as people loved by God, people who understand this significance of God, the significance of him being the love that we have found, we need to make this love visible wherever we go. Um, one of the theologians, uh, C.S. Lewis, he said this. He says, people, you know, the, the moment we get to the definition or the, this discussion of God is love, we get to a place where we don't really mean or know the meaning behind us. But he says, this is the actual meaning. He says, the meaning of God is love. The living, it is the, the living, the dynamic activity of love has been going on in God forever and has created everything else out of what? Out of love. 
everything God did is out of love. That means that our whole love is infected. In, we are infatuated with the love of God. It is infecting our whole being of who we are. And because it infects our life, it changes the way we think, the way we do life. I remember this one Saturday morning, the one lady, I was still in Port Elizabeth, and she phones me. She says, hey, Llewellyn, you need to come to our house now. Now, if people tell you to come, to come to their house immediately, you normally think, oh, you know, somebody's got, you know, suicide thoughts and, or somebody died or there's really, it's bad. And in that moment, I was thinking, do I really have to come now? Because we had a family thing on. And I'm realizing I will have to say to my wife and the children, listen, I first have to go deal with this issue. And I asked the lady, do I really have to come now? Can't I come later in the afternoon? She says, okay, yeah, you can come later. And I'm like, okay, great. So later in the afternoon, I got there. And um, so this whole afternoon, I'm, on, I'm praying for this, man. It's my whole mind, my whole life is actually occupied by this thought of, I don't know what's, what to expect when I get to this house. I got there, and she said to me, he's inside the bri area. So I'm like, ooh, yes, trouble. And, uh, and you know, so I went into the bride area, and, and he, uh, he is referring to her husband. <laughs> and so he, sitting there, <laughs> I sat next to him. I said to him, how's it? He said, <gasps> I'm like, oh, okay, somebody is emotional. So I'm thinking about the worst things that, could, that can happen or will happen, you know. And this guy, I've never seen him crying. He doesn't cry. He's this macho guy, muscular guy, you know. He's always, he always looks angry, you know. When he comes into church, we issued him, a, you know, a lemon. <clears throat> doesn't smile at all. So I'm looking at him and I realize, why are you so emotional? And he said to me, <gasps> Llewellyn, is it possible? I'm like, is what possible? Is it possible? Is it normal to cry for people? I'm like, eh? When I see a crippled girl, I want to cry. I'm like, why? I don't know. When I see people with illnesses, I want to cry. I'm like, his wife says, I don't know what's wrong with this guy. Is he going to die because he keeps on telling his children how much he loves them? He hugs them. He, you know, he, he prays for them when they go to school in bed every night. He, he lays his hands on them and they pray together before the children go to bed. He says, she says, I don't know this guy. Where's my husband? <laughs> and then I felt like, oh, God, thank you, Lord. Phew. I thought the guy's busy dying. I said, you know what? Your entire life are infected by God's love, by the Holy Spirit that came to make his dwelling inside of you. And suddenly your eyes opened up. Suddenly your whole life responded to the love of God and everything, your whole being has, becoming, has become different. And now you see the pain in other people's life because the eyes that you are looking at people are through the lenses of Christ. That's the same way Christ looked at us when you were still lost. He looked at you and he cried for you and we responded and said, God, I'm willing to walk this road with you. I said, that's the love of Christ inside of you. That's the love of God. Because A.W. Tozer says this, he says, nothing God ever does or ever did or ever will do is separated from the love of God. Nothing. Everything who God is, is out of his very nature. And the nature is love. Love. That's so much that, in fact, that the psalmist wrote this one uh, a psalm in 139. He wrote this psalm and everything that you can go look in the psalm. If you go read the psalm, you realize the definition of this whole idea of his love endures forever. If you look through it and you read through it, you realize that it, it unfolds your whole life. 
from the rising of the sun to the from the rising to the setting of the sun, everything that revolves around that in between that, your life is defined in that. And the definition of it says, His love endures forever. You will know that a few musicians made a lot of music out of this. Ron Canoli, His love endures forever. From the, I'm not going to sing now. I still want you to listen to me. <laughs> but because of his love, because it endures forever, you and I can sit in church today. You and I can listen online today. You and I can become part and parcel of what he wants to do in and through us. His love is constant. It never changes. It cannot be, we cannot be separated from his love. Listen to Romans 8, chapter 8, verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine, nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through what? Through the fear? Are we conquerors through the bus that's driving up and down? Are we conquerors because if you don't turn, you're going to burn? No, I am more than a conqueror through him who loves me. And now Paul says, listen to this. Now Paul says, he says, for I am convinced. <laughs> I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor the any power, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation. That includes your mother-in-law. <laughs> in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Because it is in Christ Jesus that he came to reveal his very heart of love unto you and me. It's through that. Psalms 103 says, The Lord is merciful, gracious, slow to anger, and abound in steadfast love. Steadfast. It is steady as can be. It doesn't change. God doesn't fall in and out of love with you and I. His love remains the same. Because Christ's love, Christ's love is not a memory. It is a moment by moment action of the living son of God. It's a moment, it's not now and then. It's an everyday moment, understanding and discovering the Son of God, the understanding and discovering how God feels about you and I. Why? Because His love endures forever. Romans 8, verse 28. And we know that for those who love God, all things, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to His purpose, what is God's purpose for your life? To accept his love. To live your life according to his will is to dwell in the presence of his love. Until Christ become a treasure, we don't know what it is to be loved by God. Until Christ becomes a treasure in your life, you will never experience the love of God you will never know what it is to be loved by God because the ultimate revelation, the ultimate discovery of love was the fact that Christ came to dwell amongst us. He came to show us a different way. He came to make this life, he came to revolutionize this whole life, this whole being of humans on this earth, showing them a different way of living. And that was through love. Not through the law. Remember last week? Yeah, but the, but the law of Moses said this. And the law of the Roman Empire says this. But what does the, the law of love say? What does that law say? 
If you understand that law, it will change the way we think. Because God is not defined by love. God defines love. And the identity of love is Jesus Christ. The personality of love is Jesus Christ. The fact that Christ died for us, He came to bleed in every fiber of our being. His love. He came to show us that His love is liquid. It needs to flow in every area of your life. When you, when you say, God, but, but can your love fill this area of my life? Yes, because my love is liquid unto you. My love can do A, B, and C. My love can do whatever you think because I'm the very nature of this being, love. This is who I am. And so Jesus, with his disciples, when Jesus came to a place where he actually started telling them about him going away, he started journeying with them. And at a moment, he says, let me pray over you the priestly prayer that you will understand why I'm saying this. And then he prays for us. And this is his prayer in John chapter 7. He says, Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am. He says, to see my glory that you have given me because you love me before the foundation of the world. Before you were even created. Before your, ever, your parents ever actually had a thought of you. Thinking, what are we going to name you? Are you going to be a boy or girl? Whatever. They said, the Bible says, God knew you. And now Jesus says, before the foundation of this world, you knew me and you loved me, God. Oh, righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, uh, that you have sent me, I made known to them your name and I will continue to make it known that the love that which you have loved me may be in them. And now he makes it personal. He says, and I, myself, in them. So we don't have an excuse of not feeling loved by God because Christ himself is willing to dwell with inside of you. He did not come to visit. He did not come as a vacation. He came with everything and you better open up your house for them because He wants to make you His dwelling place. You have become the residence. You have become the address of Jesus Christ. God is living inside of you. And the essence and the very nature of God, this love will be manifested in and through your life. And this morning, I'm just praying and I'm, I'm reading this when when he says, I pray that they will see your glory. Now the translation says that you will open up their eyes to see you, Father, the loving Father. How much more if we stand still today with communion? Isn't this the very essence of his love for us? Isn't this the very symbol of how he cares about you and I. Understanding that the time when he gathered his disciples, he said to them, this is my body. This is my covenant with you. As a constant God, I'm not gonna fall in and out of love. I'm gonna define my love for you by dying on the cross. For everything that you have become, that your life will change for the good. And I want us to take this moment as the worship team is going to do a song for us that you come out and go get some of the, 
the communion, the bread and the juice that's on the table that represent his body, that represent his blood that, that flowed for you because his love is liquid in every area of your life. That you, will start, that you will start having this communion as a family, as an individual and ask God, God, come and define your love inside of me and tell me how you feel about me through communion. Can we do that? So where you are, stand up on your feet, go get some of the communion on the table and then I'm gonna do a prayer after this song. God bless you.